Well, we've been plugging uh, all week that uh, we're going to have live country in the uh, studio today. And Jess Wade, uh, he made it in from Chapman, Louisiana. How you doing, Jess? I'm doing great. I appreciate you having me. Well, now, I'm just so happy that you're with us. And uh, Jess, tell us a little bit about yourself before you start singing. Get that guitar, because I'm going to ask you to sing here in just a minute. And, you know, um, I played the song Heaven Help Me the other day, and you said you wrote that. And, you know, that's a, that's a good song. I liked it. That's a true story, too. I wrote that one up in Nashville. Oh, okay. Well, tell us about uh, uh, Jess Wade. Now, he's got a brand new album here. It's uh, Country Comforts, and uh, we'll be giving one away here in just a little bit. But uh, tell me about Jess Wade. Give me some information. Well, I come from the big city of Chatham, Louisiana. All right, and where's Chatham? Chatham is uh, somewhere between Winfield and Columbia. And Monroe and Ruston. All right. If you can find those towns, just look in the middle of them, and you'll find Chatham, Louisiana, down in Jackson Parish. And you were born and raised down there? I was born in Jackson Parish over in Jonesboro. We moved to Chatham when I was four years old. We wanted to get out of the inner city and go to a, a better school system. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> now, when did you start uh, picking? When you were a kid or what? When I was five years old, I got my first guitar. Got it for Christmas. I like to tell people I was born singing. Well, that's about right. It was a good Christmas because we got some, uh, me and my sister got matching cowboy outfits and bicycles, and I got my guitar. So that I, I found out later Mom and Daddy took out a loan for that Christmas. Oh, my. That God. was spectacular. Yeah. And that was five years old when I first started playing. My gosh. Well, give, give the folks a little example of uh, your picking and singing now, So, uh, and we'll talk more about you. What are you going to do for us? Uh, you going to do one you wrote? or? Uh, yeah, let me do one that uh, a lot of folks uh, up here in Arkansas seem to like it. Okay. I dusted my records, turned the radio off Played your cheating heart and the old rugged cross From old sir I dusted my records, turned the radio And the old rugged cross From old southern gospel To honky-tonk songs And I didn't bother To turn that radio on Cause your country ain't country no more And what they call don't sound like before. Give me old Hank and Waylon and Johnny and George. Cause your country ain't country no more. So I called up the DJ, said, Play you do it. Play some jerk. He was young, he was new, and he was just starting out. And I don't think he knew who I was talking about. I said, your country ain't country no more. And what you call country music don't sound like. Play some old Hank and Waylon and Johnny and George Cause your country ain't country no more So I turned down the music and I drifted to sleep And I saw Johnny Paycheck walk right up to me he said this old violin 
has sure got it made. Cause up here in heaven, country music still plays. See, your country ain't country no more. And what they call country music don't sound like before. We've got old Hank and Waylon and Johnny and George. And your country ain't country no more No, your country ain't country no more And what they call country music Don't sound like before Give me old Hank and Waylon And Johnny and George No Country ain't country no more. And that is in the album here, and uh, the first one in the radio station can get a free album. 406 West Union, just come by and knock on the door, and uh, we'll give you this uh, free album. Now, you're talking about uh, country ain't country no more. It's probably pretty true, isn't it? It's not country anymore. It is. That song, I don't think I could say it any better. But uh, these folks up in South Arkansas, just you're my kind of people, just like back home. You've all been so good to me. But these folks in South Arkansas are so blessed to have you. You, you bragging on me a little, so I'll brag on y'all. Driving into town, I said, let's see what radio station I can get. Yeah. And I started listening to Waylon and the Bellamy Brothers. Just then we was listening to, to, to Willie. You can't get that just anywhere anymore because your country really ain't country anymore. And uh, that's what the song's all about. And that was a true story. Like most, not all, but most of them, the songs I write, I turned on the radio one night and decided I'll just turn it off and write a song. And that's what I wrote. Oh, my, that's good. That's good. Very good. And, you know, it's uh, I'm trying to think of the places that you could go into a radio station, sit down with uh, a live announcer and uh, pick and sing. I don't think uh, maybe I don't know XM radio. I doubt it. But, uh, you know, XM would be a good place to try. But they, uh, they don't have these country stations where you could do this anymore. They're few and far between. Yeah. Very, very much so. I, uh, I'm just, you know, honored to be here and be able to do it. I was talking to a good friend of mine at a radio station the other day, and I said, you know, can you, can you let me play some of my songs, or can you play some of my songs uh -huh. off CDs? Yeah. And he reminded me. He said, yes. You know, I'm in a band. I said, yeah. He said, I can't even play my own songs. Oh, really? And that's that's the sad thing. You know, those days uh, that we read about and and we miss them. And we watch documentaries about them, but the good old days when folks like Loretta and, and uh, you know, Willie and Waylon and all those guys, when they, and Hank, when they were starting out, they would just drive into a station, and all it took was talent. Okay. All they had to do was walk in there and, and let somebody hear them and say, that is talent. Now, Loretta and uh, Mooney, they drove that old car all over the Midwest, you know, from Nashville, promoting her first song. And she went in a radio station, and I don't remember which one it was, but this is a true story. She went in a radio station. She had already sent her uh, record out and asking the, uh, the guy on the air, the disc jockey, to play it. And she went in, and this particular guy said, yeah. He said, we played it. We got no reaction, and uh, I, I don't think we'll do an interview with you. And Loretta looked down, and she happened to see the envelope that she had sent the, uh, the record in, had never been opened. He hadn't even listened to it, you know. Yeah, that's. I suspect that happened yeah. a lot, and you know, it's just does. it's just tough, you know. Nowadays, in uh, the days when I started in radio, we got tons of records every week, and you know, we would sit down and have a little meeting there and listen to them, and if we liked them, we'd play them. Well, we listened to everything that came in. That doesn't happen now. That kind of stuff's usually decided in New York City or somewhere else. And that's, uh, you know, a lot of places don't know what country is. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, it's tough on me because when you're in any, you know, any creative field, you don't want to start out trying to build your own 
following or repertoire by criticizing others. Uh-huh. So you don't want to do that. But at the same time, I mean, reality is reality. You turn on the radio and and you just you know you turn it off, and it, and it makes it kind of, it kind of sad because there is so much talent out there. Yeah, I'm seeing at these these shows I go to. I'm seeing uh, astronomical amounts of talent, but everybody's trying to break in somewhere, looking for their own way to get it out, uh, just to be heard. You know, back back years ago, if someone asked me, how do you get into radio? I could have told them, you know, you do like I did. You go into a small radio station and you offer to do anything, you know, pick up the trash, sweep up, and uh, work the the shifts that nobody else wants. And everything's automated now. Yeah, I saw trash can when I walked in. I told them I work for y'all, whatever y'all need me to do. Uh, Y'all been playing my music? And and that means so much to me. So, uh, you know, that's uh, I've done a few radio interviews, but like I said, they're getting few and far between. Sure. There used to be the number one thing you had to have was talent. Yeah. And I'm not going to say that doesn't help because it'll certainly get you noticed, among, but it's it's not necessarily the main ingredient. You know. Now it's a lot of stage and show appeal, bright lights and glamour. And, yeah. Yeah. Now let's go back. Uh, you didn't. Uh, start in music that you, you'd worked and you didn't you go down to maybe florida and do some work down there you said florida yeah uh i went to florida once and bought a motorcycle i didn't sing down there oh okay uh, i'm going to be singing there all right now uh, didn't you have a job in the wildlife industry or something that you were telling me about i thought you said that you'd uh, what did you do before this there's no telling what I to- told you. But <laughs> no, I, uh, I, I've done everything. Absolutely. I mean, I grew up a farm boy, you know, hauling hay in the summers, hauling pup wood. You know, he's young as nowadays, don't know what that is. Yeah. Uh, but, but hauling wood, working in the timber industry. Uh, didn't have really any money and, and wanted to have a little bit. Yeah. So decided I would find a way to get there and, and had everything from restaurants to rent houses to storage buildings. You know, when you live in a small town, you're trying to make a living, you'll do just anything. And I uh, I made a lot of bankers rich along the way, so they're still <laughs> good friends of mine. Now, how did your restaurant work out? Uh, well, at that time, I had a lot of uh, a lot of real estate, uh, heavily in debt. I'm not bragging that I was rich or anything, but I had a lot of real estate. And uh, I uh, actually borrowed against a lot of the real estate to make a restaurant, and then... Um, uh, the restaurant didn't do so well. You know, I wanted to talk instead of instead of cook, and so I wanted to have other people cooking and, and doing all that, and I was walking around cooking, and, I mean, walking around talking instead yeah. of managing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the restaurant didn't do so good, and, and uh, I'd sold a lot of my other properties by then, and I was like, you know what? I should have just sold the restaurant to start with. <laughs> Would have saved me a fortune. Are and you, uh, somewhere you? along, you know, you can look back and say this didn't work and that didn't work or that didn't work because I tried it all. But I look back sometime and I say, I'm kind of glad a lot of that didn't work because if it had, I'd be following through with that. Instead, it's like, you know, if this, 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 and this didn't work, maybe I need to get that guitar back up and, out and polish it up. And, you know, and uh, so that's what I do now. Well, why don't you sing us another song? I don't, uh, maybe you want to do something from the album or maybe it's another song you want to do. His name is Jess Wade and he's got an album out here called Country Comforts. And if you'll come by the front door, I'll give you one. I sang this one on the uh, Columbia County Opry the other night. You know, this is a fresh off the press. I just wrote this one. Believe me, Belinda, I still love you. You will never know how hard I try. Believe me, Belinda, I still love you And you will never know how hard I've tried But there's only one conclusion I could come to That I will never keep you satisfied Believe me, Belinda, I still want you When all my friends remind me that I'm a fool They say you live to break 
my heart Well, don't you? And I was never meant to be your tool I swore that I would be with you forever I said that I would stay right by your side I told you we would always be together Belinda, I like that. I like, sure I like putting right, women's names right, in it. All right, you got a winner of where's oh, your album here? Okay. Yeah, you got a winner. And the gentleman out here to, to wants the, the album to go. All right. All right. Well, Thanks. that was quick. And tell him I said thank you personally. Right. I really appreciate that. All right. And, uh, you know, how do you, how do you get the... Uh, how do you get the vision to write a song? Do you think about it a long time, or does it come to you, or how do you write a song? You know, some of them take years, literally. I've got, uh, you know, a lot of people have different things on the front of their computer, different uh -huh. pictures. Uh -huh. I've got 90-something songs sitting there staring at me just to remind me that they're not finished yet. Oh, really? So some are literally, right at 100. And those are the ones that sometimes take years, and then one of them will jump back, and you'll, uh, you'll finish it. Uh -huh. Others just write themselves. Literally, you'll hear songwriters say, this one wrote itself. I've written some of them in five minutes. Literally, just yeah. takes longer to play the chords than to write them. Sometimes I get out the guitar, and it just the guitar kind of leads me. I start playing, and that's probably one reason I don't get better at playing other people's songs. I'll get out the guitar and say, I'm going to play a little, little this, a little of that. But when I start playing, I start hearing my own words and my own stories, and something starts happening, and I start writing. Some of them, they just hit you out of the blue, like Crazy Me. You know, I th that one's on the album, sure, Crazy yeah, Me. Yeah. I did something stupid at the house. I don't remember what it was because I do a lot of stupid things. But I said, Crazy Me. I said, uh, yeah. that ought to be a song. Sure, sure. And I said, well, by gosh, it's going to be. You know, there's so many good songs that have uh, just been in the billfold of somebody or in their back pocket for years. And there are songs that, uh, you know, George Jones had so many great ones. I wonder, would oh, yeah. she come back again? Uh, you know, and what was the name of the song? Stop Loving, He Stopped Loving Her Today. 
Now, George didn't want to record that. He said, you know, that that's too sad. People will yep. never listen to that. But, I mean, you would listen to that and think, that's got to be a tremendous hit. And it was there in somebody's back pocket for years. And when you listen to it, you know that it comes from the heart. You oh, know yeah. that whoever wrote that, it comes from their heart. Even if the story, even if you write a story, like Believe Me, Belinda, for example, that's not about a certain girl named Belinda. A lot of my songs are, even the ones with names in them. Uh -huh. I try not to name too many names. Yeah. But even though the story may not be exactly one person, it's a combination a lot of times. It's a combination of feelings. And when you listen to it and you can tell there's feeling in it, whoever wrote it lived it. Well, it's like Sunday morning coming down. There's no more feeling in any song oh, than that one. Oh, my gosh. You know, I, I drank when I was younger, and I've had that experience of Sunday morning coming down. And uh, there's just got to be uh, somebody out there that... <sighs> has experienced that they know exactly what he's talking about and that's why it hit home and why everybody loved that song right and i can tell you the main way to tell you how I, how i write songs is to tell you the one way i don't write them and i understand they do that in nashville a lot they have songwriter sessions they get together you got to know the right person you got to meet them you got to co-write with them and they get together and they say four o'clock tomorrow four o'clock tomorrow afternoon we're having a songwriter session me and him and her we're going to get together and we're going to write a song we're going to write a song Regardless of how it turns, we're gonna co we're gonna write a song. That's not how I write. It's not a session. It's not something set up. It's not a booking. You know, it, it's spontaneous. It comes from the heart in some way. I believe everybody has that to a limited degree. It's just some people de some people have it more than others, and some people develop it. I mean, I started out at four years old, wrote my first song, and no, no, Terry, I'm not gonna sing it. Yeah. But if you stop and think, well, that's a long time of me saying, hey, I can write a song. Let me write another one. You know, let me just do this. Let's, let's you know, knowing that I could write a song. Well, then you hear other people, like I got a buddy, Bill, that started writing in his 40s, and he's writing songs now that, you know, are amazing. It's like, what if somebody told him at four years old, you can write a song? Uh -huh. So I think everybody's got some of that. Some of it's a, a gift, but I think we've all got some of it. And it's, you know. You know, it's such a shame that, uh, and I'll, I'll mention names that you've never heard of, but uh, Carl Blue, for example. I worked with Carl Blue on the Louisiana Hayride, and he wrote a song called, Am I That Easy to Forget? Oh, gosh. I didn't know the name up front, but uh, <laughs> of course and, I know the and song. And he bought that song from the country Johnny Mathis, and uh, I think it was either 50 or $75 that he paid for that song. Uh, Lonely Street, Carl Blue wrote that. And, of course, Andy Williams had a huge, huge, huge song with that. Where's that place called Lonely Street? And uh, these guys, they didn't know the talent they had. They didn't realize what songs that they were writing and how it would go down in history. Terry, let me tell you what a guy up in Nashville told me once. And he should know because he, he's got several big hits. And he told me, he said, do not write songs that are sad. Do not write songs about alcohol. He said the average person that buys songs nowadays is a female. She's in her 30s. She's driving to work. She does not want to hear about someone that's down and out that's drinking because she's got her own husband <laughs> dealing with all that. And he said they don't want to hear that nowadays. And I thought to myself, you know, if you took Johnny Cash and you took Chris Christopherson and you took Waylon and Willie and we could go on all night and you took out those songs that were about being down and out, about drinking, about crying, about loneliness, about getting out your guitar and just trying to get through the night or whatever gets you through, we would, we'd have a pretty small repertoire. Absolutely. And listening to your channel coming in today, you would have a very small repertoire because those are the beautiful, beautiful songs that you're playing. Yeah. And that's what we were talking about. That is so rare. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I'm honored to be here, but I also want, you know, folks here, my good friends in South Arkansas has been so good to me. I want to know that this, this, is a, this is a monument right here, right here. Well, there's not ever going to be another Chris Christopherson. There will not be another Johnny Cash. Uh, there will not be another uh, Willie Nelson, and it's like George Jones. Who's going to fill their shoes? Nobody's going to fill the shoes of uh, of Willie Nelson and Trigger. They can't. Right. Yeah. They got this word nowadays. I, I hear it a lot. It's called branding. You know, they pay big companies, you know, uh, thousands of dollars to help them come out with a brand and all that. And and I guess that's okay. 
but uh, sometimes it's just good to be yourself, you know. People come up to me and they say, oh, you know, a lot of times I say, you look like Waylon, especially when I had the hat on. And Ava, you, you yeah. know, granddaughter, she, goes, she said, you look exactly like Waylon. And that's, yeah. that's sweet of her. But, you know, a guy come up to me the other day, he said, you look like Waylon. He said, but I can tell you don't try to. <laughs> now, that was a compliment because yeah. I was like, you're right. I don't try to. I'm Jess Wade. That's right. Get your guitar and do another song here, Jess. And you're listening to Jess Wade, and uh, he's from Chatham, Louisiana. And uh, he came all the way up to sing for us today. And uh, he's got another one picked out. Did I forget to say I love you this morning Did I forget to wake you up to say goodbye Did I forget to say I love you this morning did I forget to wake you up to say goodbye? Did I forget to kiss your cheek as I was leaving? Or crazy me to ever make you wanna cry? Did I forget? That's one you wrote, too, I'll bet, isn't it? Yes, that yeah. was crazy me. You know, I told you something the other night uh, here at the Columbia County Hayride, and I said, just don't go out there and open with a song that you uh, wrote, but open with somebody else's song. 
Now, that's like uh, when Waylon Jennings, if he wrote a brand new song and he wanted to preview it, he wouldn't open with it. He would open with uh, one that uh, people were familiar with, and later on down the line, he would do one of his new songs. And uh, I yeah. think you took that to heart. Oh, yeah. You always want them to be kind of humming along, maybe singing along, at least on the chorus. Uh, y- y- it's music is an experience you know i've listened to i've listened to uh, everything from country to folky music sure. uh none of that weird stuff and i'm not gonna yeah. put labels on it but uh I, I learned a lot from john denver and john denver one thing he taught me was that music's an experience and when you're performing on stage it's kind of like going for a walk you're not gonna say here we are you're gonna walk them through it and you start out taking them into that experience. Absolutely. And you're not going to do that with some song that they don't know. we got two minutes left here. And tell the folks where uh, you might be going, where they can see you, and about your website. Uh, thanks for mentioning the website. That is JessWade.com. And, of course, I'm on Facebook and YouTube and all the usual sites. JessWade.com is probably the best uh, place. I'll be updating it with a lot of events. A lot of live shows. I will be actually about to go on tour of 14 different states doing a lot of these country music shows with backing bands. It's going to be a fun time. Uh, September uh, the 21st, I think it is, the third Saturday in September, I will be performing in Winsboro, Louisiana at the Franklin Opry with my good buddy Gene King. Louisiana legend, it means the world to me. I'll be singing up at Boomtown Opry. I believe that's in October. You can check on their website. Over Eldorado. In Eldorado. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of these country music shows where you can still find good stuff. I'll tell you what, the uh, Boomtown uh, Opry, uh, I wasn't on it, but uh, Ava and uh, her grandma were. And, man, uh, I'll tell you, they have a great show. They're doing it right up there. Yeah, sure. And they started out, with, obviously, with a vision. Yeah. And they started out big. Some people, you know, uh, just say, well, I don't know. Let's see if it's going to work. You know, they started out saying, let's make this work. Yeah. And because of that, they was able to grasp what they wanted to work with, and they're doing a heck of a job. Now, if I ask you who Jess Wade would pay good money to go see, who would you pay to go see today? Honestly, the, the funny thing is, I don't go to many paying concerts. I don't pay good money. I go to these small shows where the <laughs> talent really is. And the biggest, uh, even even when I'm not singing somewhere, if I'm squeezing time, I go to these little shows, 5 7 $10. I'm all over the internet looking for new ones, and I'm finding some of them are free. A lot of them have a meal before you even play. And I'm hearing, you know, people that you don't even know that are amazing me. So to me, that's where music is Absolutely. nowadays. It's not about going to some big concert and hearing some big theatrical show. You can hear this back after 3 o'clock at KZHE.com. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate you.